welcome to Build. I'm Sam Thompson and we are live from London. Today I am very excited to be joined by two of the stars of new Channel 4 comedy, Dead Pixels. Please welcome former Raised by Wolves actress Alexa Davies and Skins alumni, Will Merrick. Yes. Hi. Hello. Ooh. Gonna be honest. Oh, it's like yeah. live mic'd <laughs> I, myself. So. I have watched the first two episodes of your new show, Dead Pixels, mm. and I love it. Thank you so much. It's so good. And I'm not a noob. I was saying, I was saying it to the guys backstage. I was like, I'm not a noob. I used to be a... Uh, MMO RPG guy. Wow. Nice. Yeah, That's what a... does that stand for? <gasps> Rock Multi... play game. What is it? Multi uh, RPG. Yeah. M, M what? MMORPG. That's what M -M Kingdom Scrolls is. You don't even know, man. Come on, man. MMO. But you know what? You're just about to get saved because we need to do socials first. So you've got a little bit of time to Ooh. think about it. Okay. Uh, if you guys at home have any questions for Alexa and Will, then tweet us at Build Series LDN or if you're live on Facebook, just leave a comment below. You still don't know, do you? Multi. Oh, God. I don't know why I'm trying. This is on you. Can I take this on? Yeah. Maybe someone could tweet in and let us know. Tweet in and let us know. <laughs> That'd be great. Now, look, I want you guys to tell everyone, because obviously they haven't watched it, tell them what your show is about, Dead Pixels. Okay. Yeah. Dead Pixels is about uh, a group of people who are in what you'd call a clan on a game. So they've come together to team up and work together on a game and play the game together. Uh, and the game is called Kingdom Scrolls. Uh, and I guess this, the plot line within the game is uh, there's a new sort of bad guy in the game called the Hive Mother, and they're trying to save the Ninth Kingdom. That's all within the game. And then you have the lives of Nikki, Meg, and Usman, and others, uh, and their lives playing this game and interacting with each other and having a good time. And uh, Alexa, you play Meg. Now tell us about her. Meg. She's great, by the way. Thanks so much. Oh, oh there, there she is. is. Yeah, so Meg kind of doubles up as Meg and Greta. That's her avatar in the game. Greta is a hunchback, and I think that says more about Meg than I possibly can. Um, she, she, I think she's just someone who doesn't really know what she wants from life at this moment in time. So she just kind of gets up, goes to her job, and then comes home and plays Kingdom Scrolls. Plays Kingdom Scrolls at work as well. And her only real objective at this point in her life is to defeat the Hive Mother. And she's, yeah, also frustrated in other ways. <laughs> is, yeah. And Will, tell us about Nikki. Uh, Nikki's sort of a social recluse. Uh, he is, he has this sort of perpetual fear of his own uh, ultimate death. Um, and he can't really get away from that fear. He thinks about it a lot. Uh, he's sort of having this like never ending existential crisis. Uh, and he's very insular and shy and nervous. Um, uh, but on the game, he's a, he's a bit of a legend. Mm. Yeah. We actually have a clip of you guys in action, and we're going to take a look right now. <laughs> now, did you guys do a lot of research? Did you actually have to start playing online games for this role? I would never play online. The script for Ep1 just terrified me, because what happens really on in the show is everything they have is stolen. Everything they have, and I would hate that because I am a gamer, and I think you put a lot of time and a lot of energy into it. And if someone came and stole my castle, what castle? What's the name of our castle? Yeah, Blackfinger. That's the one. Blackfinger. That's our castle, and it gets stolen within the first twenty seconds of the show. I would hate that because I have Red Dead Redemption Two, and I really want so to. So do online. I. Oh my god! Wow. Oh my god. Okay. Like, we need to calm down because that is not what we're talking about. Okay. We'll talk later. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I really want to play the online version of that. but I, want I to have. I'm, sc I'm scared someone's just going to come and shoot me. They do. No, I don't want that. See, that's what I'm not about. That's why you need to form it. a posse. That, and we'll talk about it later. Okay. form an alliance. <laughs> Will, talk to us about you. Did you do any research? Did you slide into online? Yeah, I did. I, I mean, I, I was a PlayStation man when I was a kid, so I did a lot, like... Uh, I, I went through those sort of games, but I did uh, get on World of Warcraft, which is probably oh, yeah. possibly like the most... This, the most similar game out there to, to King of Scrolls. Probably what it was based on, I would have thought. Yeah, I think, and I Fortnite, think there's a lot maybe. of elements in it. It's like a massive like, you know, sandbox game and you can do whatever you want and you can go to all these different places. So I thought like Warcraft was going to be a good thing to get me into it. 
And I lost a lot of time on Warcraft. So <laughs> yeah. Did you feel like you slipped back Mate, into your think, child, that like was, childhood But that years. was the first thing I realised, like, just my first session. Like, I set up my character and everything. I was like, I'm going to, you know, I'll just do this for a bit and then do something else. It was like four hours later like that, you know? The time is just gone. Because you, you're, you're so immersed. You're so, you, you just get lost in it. And uh, the graphics are incredible. Like, in, in this game, in King of Scrolls, like, it's like a fully built world. I mean, just, the graphics are so brilliant. And you, you really, uh, yeah, you get sucked in. I was going to ask you, like, so how do you sort of handle filming, like, in real life? And then, like, I suppose you're dubbing on that, aren't you? Just no, talk over it. we film everything. Really? So the whole script comes in, we shoot everything, which meant we had, like, each of us, so myself, Will, Sargon, who plays Usman, and uh, David, who plays Russell, we had to sit there. We had, like, one day each, didn't we? Just yeah. sat in front of our computers, just going and changing outfits and coming back and doing it and making sure we covered everything. Yeah. So that so this all happens afterwards. And then they choose, oh. yeah, they yeah. choose kind of where the joke fits best because they were able to fit in loads of visual gags with the animation. So sometimes you see, you see the avatars when a joke's being delivered, but sometimes you see us. But yeah, everything is recorded. None of it's So we stuff. got to act together. We didn't have to go into a booth. Like we were acting together for yeah. all of the vocal. So also on over the game. Oh, that's really cool. Wait, yeah. what do you think about your avatars? Did you? Was it your decision who you I'm were? I'm so jealous of yours. I've always said this. I love Greta. I love mine. <laughs> there she is. I think you're so right though that they they do sum up the characters. I think better than we could like for some. In what way? way? They have created honest versions of themselves like that's what meg sees herself as nikki's is this amazingly cool wizard so called like warwick wiz the unwavering yeah and i think the fact that he's a child like the wizard is a child i think <laughs> says a lot about nikki i think nikki is still kind of 11 years old in, mm. in a lot of ways yeah and what would you why do you think they're so immersed in kingdom scrolls oh, that's a good question why thank you that's okay <laughs> um I think the common denominator with these two characters, especially maybe Yosman as well, is that they get they're not super comfortable in normal social situations. But then in this game, it's that anonymity of the freedom internet. as well. Isn't yeah, it? it's like everyone on the internet. Suddenly, you know, you could be the shyest person in the world, but suddenly, if someone doesn't know who you are, if suddenly you're Greta and you're a hunchback, you can kind of do and say whatever you want, because it kind of takes away that thing of consequence doesn't yeah. it yeah it's escapism right yeah yeah going to a faraway land and then sort of not having to think i suppose about like the troubles of life yeah yeah sure i think they're they're both really good at it as well like yeah. i said earlier like they they, they have their clans called the jade knot and um they're they're a really big deal in this game like no one messes with the jade knot you know what i mean so apart from these guys yeah yeah but like <laughs> i think they're they're kings in this, in here, yeah. and outside, I, I think that they don't feel as much like that. Would you say they're more successful on their online life than they are in real life? Yeah, a, a lot more. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And do you think there's a little bit of a worry then for because you know you've done a lot of this now, so you would probably know for like real hardcore gamers in real life. Do you think there is a worry they can get too immersed in the online world? I think that the show explores. Yeah, that, uh, well, that an element of that just because that is an element of gaming like you know how much time is too much time but I think that Dead Pixels is a total celebration of that time yeah. and everything that comes with that time so whether there are moments where you're like wow that was you know 10 hours was too long but it's 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 still a beautiful experience for them we do have episode three though the we do have an episode where you do kind of get a glimpse into that big nose Oh, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. It's it's explored. Yeah. It's explored. We touch on it. Yes. Yeah. For definite. And did either of you succumb to the Fortnite craze? No. I didn't. I never did Fortnite. I had um I had a really nice time over Christmas though where I went to see my fellas um niece and nephews and we played Fortnite oh, Monopoly. I played with my niece. Oh, okay. I played Fortnite. Like no, this. Fortnite Monopoly. Oh. I didn't even know that thing existed. That is a juggernaut. I played that. I played that, but not this no again just playing with other people i don't want to do it <laughs> you're a solo yeah, girl I fair am. play and uh, your flatmate allison mm -hmm. she's sort of been plopped in there she's not part of that world whatsoever do you think they've sort of tried to make her life almost seem <laughs> boring and and the online life more interesting yeah yeah <laughs> and she's like good allison at everything is... got the boyfriend and the flute yeah allison is this representation of what 
Nikki and Meg would call like the real world. Yeah. And she thinks she's that living sucks. this real life, but actually it's all. She, yeah, she's conforming to society. Yeah. Whereas we, they're we actually rip, doing we rip their truth, truth lot. aren't they? Yeah. yeah, the scenes with Alison are so of... funny because you just got these two people that just kind of live in their jobs or in their bedrooms and then they come out and just kind of throw abuse at her. For, yeah, when for she's, just trying to get, she's just trying to get us like out of our room. <laughs> <which is> <laughs> She's so lovely and she tries to help all the time, but it's just, it's just not appreciated. It's not going to happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's a brilliant scene when you're, when you're like shutting the curtains. Someone's like cleaning the window <laughs> and you're like, yeah. and what did you say? And I've just closed the door. And I can't actually yeah. know what you said, but it's brilliant. Close the curtains on my feelings of inadequacy. <laughs> It's so good. Yeah. And uh, you develop a little crush on uh, on your new colleague, Russell. Yeah, that's definitely. <laughs> and I funny. love him. So that's he's a noob, everybody, is what he would be called in the online world. Uh, what is a noob? Noob is someone who's just started a game who doesn't really know what they're doing. We also call him a clacksman, which mm -hmm. means like he's a clacker, so he clacks on his keyboard, so he plays really loudly, which is really uncool in the gaming world. Like, you, you should be silent but deadly. You know, <laughs> but he is a filthy newbie clacksman. Look at him. Look at his newbie face. And how does he sort of fit into the story? So Meg kind of brings him in because of, you know, separate desires that she has. She kind of wants to have her way with him. And she that means he kind of enters <laughs> the game, doesn't he? And then yeah. they're kind of burdened with him in the game. He somehow becomes a member of the Jade Knot. And he's terrible. Nicky's just furious yeah. and jealous and doesn't know how to sort of compute all these feelings he's having yeah yeah and we see an early act of betrayal yeah yeah it's dark and do you like it does is there a nastier side of gaming you know is that going to get expa expa exposed as the show goes on i, I think it but that's that's just like like we said earlier this is just one of the things that ted Pickles explore, explores is the uh i guess the um the anonymity of it mm. gives you that you can do these things with is there responsibility in what we've done? Like, it's really funny the next day after we do this thing because we kind of feel guilty, but we don't. We're trying to play it off like we don't feel guilty, but yeah. we feel really bad about it. There's quite a few occasions in the game where they will do something in the game and then just feel the need to talk about it and, and ca keep saying that it was just in the game and it's not real life and it's just in the game. They yeah. just constantly keep going on about how it's in the game. So they clearly do feel responsible and guilty for stuff, but... Like when you do it, like do when it you're anyway. playing Red Dead and you do something. Yeah. Maybe. I don't feel any guilt in Red <laughs> Dead, <Gosh>. mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, I loot everyone. Yeah. When you got, this is such like a fun thing to film, isn't it? Like you guys, yeah. are, are there two, so you're in opposite bedrooms. Do you actually film that? Yeah. Yeah. Like next to each we, other. So we had, yeah. we had a flat built in this, in the studio, which was amazing because. It was amazing. We just spent so the whole. I, I spent all my time in this flat. So if Alexa was shooting and I wasn't, I was sat in my bedroom like reading comics and playing games. It was it was awesome. It was it was great. Yeah. So it's all set out as you see it in the show, um, and then yeah, there's that one wall between. But what was so great is whenever you're in a scene, but you're not actually in it, so you're just reading in your lines for somebody else. We'd all be there anyway. So it was mm. like own clothes day at school. Yeah, everyone the, was just hanging out. The, the kitchen, camera would yeah. be on Will, but me and Sargon and David would be there, just sat together having a laugh, reading it. So everyone got along really well. Oh yeah. Yeah, we were all we really tight. Laugh, yeah. Didn't we? Yeah, well, that's the question as well. Because is it called corpsing, where you like laugh yeah. mid scene? Oh, Who is the worst culprit for that? I was bad on was, this show. Yeah, like on this one. our scenes, I think the worst ones were our scenes with Charlotte, who plays Alison. Um, and you're just hurling abuse. Because when we're <laughs> hurling abuse, her, it's like so unfounded the abuse we're giving her. Like she's actually living this like really rounded life, and we're just not having it. She's Yoga not, at ten. Yeah. yeah. Boyfriend at eleven. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about Vince yeah. Vaughn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God, we couldn't get the Vince to a couple of those. Things. Yeah, especially when there is a couple of moments, I think, where, <laughs> where Charlotte's char character, Alison, kind of sits us down and tells us what we're doing wrong, and we just think she's absolutely crazy. Yeah. And some of the line, I think you some literally have a line where we go, okay, Alison, well, that's, you're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> stuff like that, just saying the silliest stuff that like an eight-year-old would say. We repeat her name a lot, which Alison. made me laugh. Yeah. Made me laugh, made me laugh. Like, it's a, like it's a dig, so, yeah. Alison. That's such an Alison thing to do, <laughs> Alison. Do you think nowadays um, gaming, you know, is still seen as sort of geeky, I suppose? Is that outdated? Because, you know, think about things like Fortnite. I think they make so much money and stuff. Do you think that's like people are starting to normal people because i think that's what the show does and it? it depicts normal people who still have lives i think everyone still thinks people live in a basement don't they is that changing now i 
I hope so. I think so, right? It's totally changed. Yeah. They're really cool games now it's as well. It's a multi-billion dollar yeah. like industry. Yeah, I, I think, think so. Even if you've played Candy Crush, you're a gamer. If you yeah. play Solitaire, you're a gamer. Snake. Yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. That's, why, well, that's what we've always been saying through this, through the interviews and stuff. I mean, Candy Crush is, you get, you know, you complete something and you get that little ping feeling inside mm. you and that's, that's gaming. Yeah. And that's kind of why it's the serotonin. Yeah. Yeah. Serotonin kicks in for a tiny moment and it goes away. <laughs> I'm just chasing that high, man. And uh, you, Joe Brown uh, wrote this. John, John, sorry. Oh, sorry, John. He's like our God. He's John Brown, the yeah. creator. <laughs> but he wrote this. Okay. Yeah, and uh, is there a lot of mastery behind it to get this kind of humor? John's a genius. Yeah. Like, yeah, you've got to be an insane writer. To yeah. We were saying earlier, the creative team behind this is ridiculous. We've got Sam Bain and Jesse Armstrong of Peep Show. John has written for Fresh Meat and Veep. It's quite similar. Yeah. It's like, like the humour is very similar. Yeah. yeah. It's, like yeah, the, the exactly. awkward silences and the pauses and stuff. Yeah. Like it's, it's John's been working in. with Sam and Jesse for a long time. Yeah. So. But the beauty of the script is even if you took all of those names away, I still would have... Yeah, jumped at the chance of doing it because it's just John's lines are the funniest lines. I wish you could read it. Actually, yeah, you know, it reads so well. Like we both, obviously, we were on at different times, but we both talked about our experience of reading that script for the first yeah. time. Is it I hard just want to, say to this. see the script and then put it into action? I found I didn't really imagine the animation at all. It wasn't until I saw the animation that I realized kind of how how much it adds to the show because there's really some quite dark visual jokes throughout the series. Yeah, there are. <laughs> there are really some quite dark moments which c add so much to it because the gags are already there. It's, it's already really funny. The relationships between the characters are so well written and then suddenly you're seeing these characters kind of smashing bears around the face just to kind of get XP so they can buy like, their castle I always back. think it's Paddington and just yeah. smashing it across <laughs> the room. Yeah. Do you know what I really like? I like the way that Meg is the one with the libido. Yeah. And that's kind of new because a lot of these kind of comedies before, it'd always be the guy who's sort of like, you know, like all about the girls and stuff like that. And I really like, it's quite fresh. Was that yeah. John? That was John, yeah. And John has written some amazing kind of, um, I don't know how really to phrase it, but he's made up a lot of good nicknames. I feel like in a lot of shows like The Inbetweeners and, and stuff like that, you see boys kind of making up rude words for their rude parts. But in this, Meg says some, like, good, Meg says some dirty stuff. You've got stuff. endless innuendos. Endless Amazingly innuendos. Amazingly creative ones. And that's all John. Yeah. That's all John, he's nailed it. And it is nice, and you said something the other week about just um, the love triangle. There is a bit of a love triangle in this, and it is really nice that the female is the one that's kind of the loud, kind of, you know, just wants to have sex one. Yeah. Whereas Nikki is... Yeah, tell us about Nikki. Yeah. The more I've thought about Nicky, the more I think he's like, I, I, I don't think Nicky's found any sexual, like his, his sexuality yet or what that means to him or what his drive is. I think he is really like a little boy and he's got Meg and so he feels safe and there's some feelings there that he can't understand. And, and even if he did, I, I wouldn't want to see how he would go about sort of, um, well, in the show you sort of see him trying to express himself uh, and his feelings for Meg and it kind of goes horribly wrong. But um, yeah, I think he uh, he just gets very very jealous when uh, when David's character comes in and sort of takes Meg away from him. And uh, Alexa, you play Athena in a Raised by Wolves. Aretha. Aretha. I'm so, I'm so sorry. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Aretha. What do you think she would make of Meg? They're completely different people. So I can imagine Aretha being a gamer completely. I could fully imagine her really getting into that. Um, but if they met, I think if they met on the game, they'd get on really well because, they, again, they have that thing of anonymity and not not kind of needing to address who they actually are. But um, I think if they met in real life, they probably just wouldn't say a word to each other because who would start the conversation? Neither, probably, unless Alison was there to try and kick it off. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's what Alison is. So annoying. And uh, what about Allo Creevy? Is what, he getting he would, skins? Is he gonna look at? Is he gonna look and be like, "What are you doing, dude? You need to get out there." I don't. Yeah, I don't think Allo has ever played a game in his life. I don't think he'd understand w how to turn it on. Um, yeah, 
<laughs> I don't think him and Nicky would get on. At You're all. now trying they're to like, put yourself in his character yeah, and be like, just, what is yeah, he? Yeah, they're like polar opposites. Aloe's very outgoing and about chasing girls and, you know, having a good time. And Nicky just wants to get that bedroom door shut as quickly as possible. Turn the lights off, get the headset on and lock in. Which character do you prefer? Oh, man, that's like saying what's... What's your favourite kid? Who's your, which one's your favourite child? Yeah. Oh, everyone has a favourite, let's not lie. Yeah, yeah I couldn't say uh, Nikki. I couldn't say Nikki. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> oh my gosh. I would agree as well, actually, to be fair. And, and we have a social media question and it's going to shed some light. Okay, Allegra on Twitter says, by the way, dot, dot, dot. I'm just, you know, there we go. Intense atmosphere going on here it stands for massively multiplayer online role-playing game massively multiplayer sam, why are you calling it? she goes sam you idiot I, it wasn't just me yes, sam, sam you idiot if you could play a game against anyone in the world guys who would it be and why against yeah that's such a good question would you want to play some against someone good or oh, oh can, can i change her sorry allegra but i'm going to change your question if you could get anyone from the world into your group on T Kingdom Scrolls, who would it be? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself Such for that question. Hard question. Oh, my God. I, oh, God. Would I want someone good or would I want someone entertaining? Like Terry Wogan. Um, a celebrity is a good shout. Why were you thinking about like my mum? No, I was trying to. Th <laughs> I was thinking about. Fine, I choose your mum. No. We can have my mum. <laughs> All right, fine. Yeah. Your mum's in. What's her name? Nicola. Oh I my god, so cute, like Nikki. Yeah, Nikki. Nikki and Nicola. <laughs> what would her avatar look like? Uh, <laughs> Be nice. Really, she's really, probably watching. I really don't know. I don't know. I think she'd go for an elf. She's kind of, mm. she's kind of cool and. You know, elvish. El elvish. <laughs> she's gonna hate the fact that I'm talking about her so much. I was just on the phone to her a second ago. She's not watching though, luckily. But this is a better game, actually. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. What what avatar would your mum be? Oh my god, what avatar would my mum be? I don't know. I've never seen my mum game actually. I think she might be into it though. If I if I could, you know, get her involved. Oh god, get her on Red Dead. My mum used to my my mum used to give me stick for like gaming when I was when I was younger. She was like, "It's really sunny outside, Will." And I was like, "I'm a cowboy, mum. I'm a <laughs> cowboy. In this, I'm a cowboy. Why would I want to go outside?" <laughs> she gets it. She totally gets it. Yeah. Well, my mum actually does watch this show, and mum, you would be an orc. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly <laughs> on, uh, guys. Do you have anything planned uh, for later this year? What are you working on? I have like a few ki things coming out, but they're all really sad, and I don't think I'm allowed to talk about them yet. I'm awesome doing drama, which is crazy. Yeah, I, I make, I, I'm making this. I don't know if I can talk about it either. It's tricky. You can't I would talk love about to anything, say it. I'd days. love to say it, and then I'll just get a call and be like, "You've blown the whole okay, thing." Okay, okay, fair play. I don't want to ruin it for you. So how about this? Okay, we're gonna end on this. Is there gonna be a season two of Dead Pixels? Oh, I think that's up to the public. Yeah. Oh, I really want there to be. Me I love too. it. I really, we want, really there want there to be. To be. <laughs> I'm a fanboy. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we hope so. Um, we just hope people get a hold of it because it's we love doing it and it's really, really funny, we think. so. I always think there's a lot of character development that can be done as yeah. well. Like There, there is definitely really a journey to be done there. Yeah. It doesn't have to finish after series one. No, and there's right. always room for new characters. That's the joy of this show is we literally have a character that lives in America that we've never seen in person. Yeah. So we could have characters from all over the world. Yeah. And that's, that's what's so great about online gaming. Yeah. I'm a gamer. Anyway, I think that's <laughs> what we've really got from this interview. Anyway, we got to wrap because we are over time oh, no. but thank you guys so much for being here uh, that's all we have time for thanks to our guests alexa davies and will merrick dead thank pixel you. starts tomorrow evening on e4 at 9 30 p.m tune in tomorrow for a special late night build with joe swash but for now one last time give it up for alexa and will thank you <laughs>